Good afternoon, this is Pam Batchelor with Digital Teaching and Learning at North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. I'm excited to have you here today to talk about creating and managing item banks in SchoolNet. Um, with me today, I have one of my colleagues from Digital Teaching and Learning. Hey, this is Kathy Parker and I am the Sand Hills Regional Consultant and I also support School Library Media for the state. I'm glad to be here with you this afternoon. Thank you, Kathy. We're glad to have you with us. Um, Kathy is going to be helping facilitate our chat as well as questions. So during um, GoToWebinar, there is a chat space where Kathy will be posting some links and important um, announcements to the group. Um, you, you have a questions panel in GoToWebinar. If you have questions at any point during the webinar, please use that questions panel to type them in. I will pause periodically to address any questions that are going on. Your first question might be how to get um, the link to today's slide deck, which you can find in the handout section of GoToWebinar. There's a PDF copy, as well as you can um, use the link that Cassie has posted in the chat, um, and as well as what you see on your screen. So we're going to get started with just a couple of quick questions. Uh, just first of all, hopefully you can hear me right now. So we're going to see real quick if you'll take a second to answer in this poll. If you can hear me, and it looks like everyone can hear me, which is wonderful. And could you see my screen just a minute ago? So just a minute ago, could you see what was being shared with you? And again, 100%. Yes, that's what I like to hear. All right, so we're going to get started with just a few review of the agenda. So we will be talking about item banks in SchoolNet, some uses for them, how to create your own item banks, how to add items to a bank, and then also how to manage an item bank. Uh, just some really fun CEU facts uh, for your live participation in today's webinar. You will get 0.1 CEU um, in a certificate that will be emailed to you within five business days of after the webinar. Along with that certificate, you will get a link to the recording of the webinar as well as a copy of the presentation. Uh, so be looking for that email address. It will go to the email address you use to register for today's webinar. So if you used a personal address, uh, be sure to check your personal email because that's where the email from me will be sent within five business days. Um, we do have a couple of sessions on this topic. So just as an FYI, um, you can only receive credit for one uh, webinar per topic, right? So if you happen to come back next week um, and listen and join us again for the seven o'clock session on the same topic, you will only receive one certificate. Please make sure you follow all of your local processes for submitting certificates. Each public school unit has its own process uh, for how they handle uh, attendance and credits for to go on your transcript. So make sure you follow that local process uh, for submitting your certificate. And if there's a justification, um, a great thing to think to talk about is how you're going to be using SchoolNet as a result of this webinar and maybe include any artifacts um, such as a test that you've built or screenshots of um, an item bank. All right, we're going to go ahead and jump in. We have one more important note. Uh, this is relatively new. Um, I discovered um, last month in our webinars that if you need to use the mobile or the phone-in version of GoToWebinar, um, if you're dialing in just via the phone number um, that was sent to you after you registered, that does not count um, for attendance. Um, it does not track attendance if you use just the dial-in. Um, but if you do need to use your phone to join us, if you need to be mobile, um, you can use the free GoToWebinar app. And there's an app for both Android as well as iPhones. If you use the GoToWebinar app, um, then it does record your name and then you will get that certificate um, for your attendance today. So that's just a, an FYI. Um, if you ever want me to join in any of our other webinars for SchoolNet or Canvas and you need to be mobile, the app is great. It's very easy to use um, and you will have your attendance recorded for me. 
All right, so we're gonna start with just a little overview of some of the banks that are already in SchoolNet. So back this summer, SchoolNet had an upgrade. SchoolNet has an upgrade in the summer and in the winter. Um, so the summer upgrade last year organized all of our assessment items into item banks. So the item banks that are currently available statewide um, and SchoolNet include our Certica Navigate item bank, which we purchase um, a license to use the items from Certica. Certica also has a Spanish item bank that we separated out. Um, they used to be mixed together in one item bank um, and to make it easier for teachers to find the Spanish items as well as to not find the Spanish items depending on their needs, um, we created a separate bank for those Spanish items. We also have a NCDPI underscore classroom item bank um, these are items that come from DPI. They are classroom items meant for you to use in your classroom for practice. Um, and then we also have the NCDPI underscore benchmark bank, which you will only see if you have leadership um, level account, either at a school or at the district level. And that is protected items for making uh, district level or school level common assessments. We have two item banks that are for CTE. Um, we have a middle school bank, and then we have an unsecured bank for our high school CTE items. The newest bank is our NCDPI underscore released bank. That has all of the released forms uh, for all of your EOCs, EOGs, and NCFEs. Uh, please note that the newest uh, released forms for ELA um, in grades three through eight will not be added to SchoolNet due to a copyright um, with the uh, authors of the reading passages that are used on that test. Due to the copyright restrictions, those will not be added to SchoolNet. The last um, bank is 2013-2016 bank. This is kind of our miscellaneous bank of all of the, uh, some of the older items that went for when we first started using SchoolNet in North Carolina. Um, this includes the Classscapes items. If you are like me and remember Classscapes items, they are in that 2013-2016 bank along with some other items. So when we think about item banks, um, we can think about creating our own item bank for using as a classroom, right? So me as a classroom teacher, if I teach U.S. history, I might want to make my own U.S. history item bank uh, to keep all of the items that I create specifically for that course. Or um, you could think about it within a PLC. I could share uh, an item bank that I create with my PLC members or even with, you know, my grade level or a whole entire subject area, right? Um, you can think about at district level, if you have some formative assessment questions that you want your, your teachers to use consistently across the district, you could create a shared bank for that. Um, you could also create a shared bank for um, district level by course or grade level. There's one district I know of that has a shared bank for biology items and they're sharing it across the district with all of their biology teachers. You could also think about uh, item banks for developing school or district benchmarks, right? And the reason why we're kind of having this webinar now and we're starting to talk about it is because coming up in the summer, SchoolNet will have its back to school release for 22.0. And coming this summer, they will have the option to quickly create an assessment from an item bank, right? So we know that in SchoolNet to create an assessment the process can take multiple steps, um, but there is going to be like a quick create from an item bank coming in 22.0. So the time is really right right now to be thinking about item banks and how can I utilize this feature um, to quickly save myself time in the future. Uh, because if I have the items already organized in an item bank, it just makes it that much easier to, to create a test and say, okay, I want 15 items from this item bank. Here's my formative assessment for this week. All right, so for the rest of the webinar, we're gonna actually go into the training site and I'm gonna show you some of these things. Um, so we're gonna use the training site because with item banks, um, it can make your homepage 
uh, kind of clunky um, if you create uh, if you create extra item banks. Um, so I encourage you to use the training site. There's no harm in us using the training site and creating extra items and extra banks. Um, we don't have to worry about permissions and those kinds of things. On the screen, I've given you the bit.ly to the training site. That's the top address. And then there's two choices for login. Now you do have logins for each specific um, charter school and um, LEA. So you could use your own logins to the training site if you have them. Um, if you don't have them, you're welcome to use one of the ones I've provided on the screen. And I know Kathy's putting them in the chat. So if you wanna go in and see as a district leader, um, you can use that HBD leader three. If you wanna go in and see item banks and experience as a teacher, you can use that teacher login. So the main difference is just gonna be when I go to share a bank, what permissions I have. Everything in SchoolNet is role-based. So as a district leader, I will have the option to share my bank with the entire district, with a school uh, or multiple schools within that district, and then also um, with people individually. As a teacher, I would only be able to share a bank um, to other people, right? So as a teacher, I just have the option to share it to other people. And that could be statewide people because our database is statewide, um, but you're still only gonna have that option to share um, to another person. You're not gonna have the options to share at the school level or at the district level. So just keep that in mind when we're thinking about item banks and you're planning out your research, okay? So I'm going to go into the training site. And I'm going to log in. And then I'm going to pause and see if there's any questions so far. No questions yet, Pam. All right. Thank you, Kathy. All right. So we're going to go into the... Um, I'm on the training site on the navigation on the left side. And if you don't see it uh, flared out, look for the three dots there um, in the top left corner. We're gonna go under assessments. I am logged in as a district leader and I'm gonna go under assessments and I'm gonna go under items, rubrics and passages. And first I'm just gonna click on item banks, which is that briefcase um, icon. So when I go here, um, first of all, this is the training site. So you will see item banks that um, we had a webinar this morning. So you will see web, uh, item banks that maybe some other folks created this morning. So just an FYI, but you should also start to see some of those items that I was talking about earlier, the item banks um, that I was describing statewide. So we can see Spanish, Certica Bank. Just to note, we're in the training site. The training site does not have all of the same items, um, assessment items, as well as instructional items as production. So you might notice a difference uh, when you log into SchoolNet uh, for your district or charter school. So a personal bank, um, if you have created any items in SchoolNet, when we had the release this summer, it took those items that you've created and it put them in your personal bank. So you can see for this account, I don't have any, but you might have some uh, when you log into your production account. But if I just go and look at the list, um, everything in SchoolNet uh, for item banks is labeled alphabetically. So that's another point to keep in mind. If you are at the district level and you might be creating three or four item banks, you might wanna think about a numbering system um, if you don't just want SchoolNet to put them in alphabetical order. If you wanted to keep your um, four district banks in a, in a certain order, then you might wanna think about a numbering system. So to create a new bank, you just go to the top of the item banks page and click on the create a new item bank. And so for example, if I wanted to do that numbering system, if I wanted to say um, one uh, high school item bank February demo. You have to give it a name as well as a description for sake of this purpose. I'm just going to copy both of those. 
you'll see your sharing settings. By default, this item thing that I'm creating is going to be uh, private just to me. I have to go down here and I have two options. I can add people or institutions. So institutions is other schools. So I can make it so everyone in my district can view only, right? And we want view only so that way they can uh, view the items in the item banks and use them to create a test. Okay, so view only means they can view the items and they can also use them on a test to create a test. They cannot edit items. They cannot add additional items to the bank, nor can they delete items from the bank. If you wanted them to be able to view and edit, then you would check that. And then um, there's another one called manage, right? Which manage means in addition to being able to edit items, add items, delete items, they're also able to manage the rights of other people. Um, and it's a best practice to have at least two people um, with manage permissions for each item bank. All right, so, and we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that in a bit. I'm gonna go change these back to view only and then click on add institution. And now everyone within my district here can view this bank. And I'm just gonna click on create bank. And so I'll get a successful message. And then here, high school item bank, go to great demo, all right? It has zero items in the bank. So we're gonna go and look at how we now, we've created a bank, how do we add items to that bank? All right, so when we go to create, and add items to our bank, we have two options, right? We can um, create a new item and save it to a bank, right? So whenever I go into SchoolNet and I go to create an item um, and I, after when I save it, it asks me which bank I wanna put it in. The other method is that we can take items from one of our existing banks. So say I wanted to take some of those Certica items and I can create a new test with those Certica items. And when you create a test, you're actually making a copy of the items. So I can unlink the copy of those items um, and then add them all to my new bank that I just made, which I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Um, I do have a very important note here, and that is with our um, contract with Certica, Certica items can be saved and modified as long as they are contained within the SchoolNet environment. Um, so what this means is I can go in and take the Certica items, I can uh, make a copy of them, create, uh, modify them, but it all needs to stay within SchoolNet, right? So I can't take a PDF of the Certica items that I modified and go take that PDF and go post it in Google Classroom or an LMS because that is outside of the SchoolNet environment and I would be in copyright violation. So a very important point that I wanna make sure that we're very clear about what we can and can't do with the Certica items um, that are within SchoolNet. So please make sure to note and share that those Certica items have to stay within the SchoolNet environment. We do have some very detailed instructions for how to copy items into a bank. If you click on this link on slide 10, um, you will see a document come up with a step-by-step -step process that I'm going to show in just a minute. Let's see if there's any questions about that. All right, looks like we're good. Okay, so I'm gonna go back into SchoolNet and I'm gonna go over and first I'm gonna demonstrate how to create an item and save it into a bank, right? So if I go on that left side of my navigation under assessment and we go into items, rubrics and passages and we click on the create little plus icon, it's gonna ask me what type of item I wish to create. Uh, for the sake of this, we're just gonna do a multiple choice item. And so I'm going to select my subject area. So we're gonna look at math and we're gonna keep it very simple for this. I'm just gonna do kindergarten. Okay. 
and we're going to go under counting. All right, and so I'm going to save and close my standard. And so um, I see that Tamara has a question. Um, so is Canvas part of SchoolNet for copying purposes? So um, here's the here's where it gets a little tricky. So SchoolNet does have a link to Canvas. So if you are creating your assessment in SchoolNet and linking it in Canvas, because when you go through and schedule the test, you can link it to a Canvas course. Um, and so the students are then opening up the TestNav browser within Canvas, um, then yes, that is fine. That is still within the SchoolNet environment because the students are taking the SchoolNet assessment within Canvas, but it's a it actually is test nav that opens up and that is school net where it could get into copyright violation is if you're talking about making a PDF of a test that you've made in school net and putting it into your course. Um, so if you're talking about that kind of of issue, then that would be a copyright violation because that's outside of school net. But as long as you're linking your assessment that you've created in SchoolNet to your Canvas course, that is perfectly fine because the, the test is still being taken within SchoolNet. I hope I explained that clearly. Good question. I am creating the assessment in Canvas. Um, so if you're using like the quiz tool in Canvas, you cannot take a Certica question outside of SchoolNet and put it into um, like the Canvas quiz feature. No, that is not allowed. Um, if it's a DPI created question or a question that you've created yourself, that is fine. But the Certica items have to stay within the SchoolNet environment. So it's a SchoolNet environment if you create it within SchoolNet and just link it to the Canvas course, but it's not a SchoolNet environment if you use the Canvas quiz builder um, to build your own assessment item. All right, so with my question, um, we're going to ask how many puppies are in the picture? And I'm just going to go out to Google. And we're going to go to images. We're going to go into our tools. We're going to look for our usage right. Um, so we're going to look for labeled for reuse or labeled for reuse of modification. And let's do this picture right here. We're going to save the image to our computer. Very important here, SchoolNet does not like copy and paste images. Um, that's probably the number one, one of the number one tickets that are put in is why does my image, I can see it, um, but the students can't see it. And more than likely, it's because of copied and pasted images. So you're always going to want to go in um, and use the image tool to add your image. Notice it gave me a warning that my tool was too big, um, my image was too big. So if we click on it and drag it to resize it, make sure it's less than 640 by 640. All right, so looking at this picture, and I'm also going to go and go. All right, so I'm going to look at this picture. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven puppies, right? So, I'm going to make my answer choices. So, maybe let's say five. 
seven, eight. I'm going to select the correct answer. And then you can add additional um, tools manipulatives or uh, formula reference sheets, those kinds of things, um, if you want. Um, I'm just going to save it for the purpose of time. I will point out that in SchoolNet, um, we do have text-to-speech. Um, you can go in and edit the text-to-speech, um, which is great for custom-created questions. Pardon questions. These students may not be quite reading just yet, so I might want text-to-speech on here um, to help these students. I can go. Pam. Yes. Something just happened to your sound, and at least on my end, we can barely hear you. You can barely hear me. Uh, okay. If you can hear me, I can hear you a little. If you can, I can hear you a little bit better now. Okay. If you can hear me, all right. If you can raise your hand in the attendee panel, and let's just do a sound check. So if you can hear me adequately. All right. Kathy, can you hear me better now? Yes, mm -hmm, I can. Okay, all right. I apologize for that. I'm going to lower everyone's hand. Thank you again for letting me know about the sound. Um, hopefully, it's just the internet flicker. Um, so as I was saying, you can go in and using the little thought bubbles on the question queue, you can go in and edit what the text to speech is. Um, this is very helpful too for math because a lot of times um, if you don't enter in the text-to-speech, um, sometimes it can read um, equ equation signs, uh, you know, inappropriate, you know, inaccurately. Uh, so editing text-to-speech is a helpful tool. So I'm going to click on Save to Bank, and now it's going to ask me which bank I want to create. So I'm going to look for my high school item, and yes, I'm going to put my kindergarten item that I just made into it. We can we can change that later. So I'm going to save it to the bank. And now if I go back to under my assessments and go to my item bank, I should see that one item that is in my bank. Um, so Meredith is asking about the muted function. Um, everyone in GoToWebinar, that's just a default. Everyone is muted. If you um, wish to speak, if you want to uh, type in your question in the attendee panel, and then when I pause, I'll unmute you if you want to speak. So if you want to type in um, that, you're, that you'd like to speak, if you just type in a question, and we'll, next time we pause, we'll let you speak. So. That's just so that way, in case there's any background noise or things out of your control, um, it just keeps everyone muted so that way we don't have background noise. All right, so um, I've looked at how I can create an item and save it to a bank. Um, next, we're going to go into looking at creating items or copying items from another bank into the bank that I want to, that is made. All right, so I'm going to go under my items, rubrics, and passages, and I'm going to click on find. And I'm going to find items. And since this is a high school bank, maybe I'm going to go in and select my standards. And maybe I'm going to go look for science. Let's ninth grade. And let's look for some biology questions on ecosystems. All right, so I have 261 items. There's a little checkbox next to items, so I can just check and add to my shopping cart. So I'm going to take these seven items here, and I'm going to go under my item actions in the blue screen and click on add to test. Okay, and so it's going to ask me, do I want to add to any of the tests I've already made? 
or do I want to click on create a new test with these items? So once I get here, got to give it a test name, a subject, and again, this is all um, in the document that's linked on the slides. So don't feel like you have to worry about remembering all of these steps. They're there for you. Um, but this is just how, I, how you create a test in school net. You give it an item name, subject, standard document. You can leave everything else default. And we're just going to generate test. So while that's generated, I'm going to see if there were any questions. No, I think we're good right now, Pam. Okay. And, um, all right. Good. All right. So, very small in the center of my screen or the top, uh, middle center there, where the question is, you'll see there's a small unlink. So, item from item bank, it's right under the, uh, the type of question it is. And we're going to click on this unlink for each question that we want to be able to add to the bank that we've created. Okay, so I'm going to unlink, and then you can either use the arrows on the top to go to from through the different items, or you can click on them um, on, on the bar here on the left side. So I'm going to use that unlink. So what this is doing um, while I'm going through this, if every time you create a test in SchoolNet, you're actually making a copy of the item uh, from whatever bank you're adding items from the test. So I've made a copy of all of these items, and now I'm going through and unlinking it from the bank it was linked to, because in another step, I'm going to add all these questions to my bank that I've created. So it doesn't remove the original question uh, from the item list. All right, so I've gone through and I've unlinked all seven of my questions. I'm going to click on return to test details and save my changes. And then as the instructions kind of show, I have to take this test and I have to make it into ready to schedule in order to add the items uh, to my new bank. So I'm going to go through the test stages of making it public and then ready to schedule. And then if I scroll down to the bottom of the screen, um, where I'll now see a link that says add all items to the item bank. Okay, so I'm going to click on add all items to the item bank. And then it's going to ask me which item bank I would like. So I'm going to click on that high school item bank and say save to a bank. You can also create a new bank right there if you hadn't created your bank yet, uh, if you've forgotten or something. All right. And now you'll see a save to item bank. And again, if I go under assessments and go click on that item bank, I'll see now that there's eight items. And I can click on it and see the one item I created earlier and then the eight items. So since this is a high school bank and I have that one question that I created that was um, for kindergarten, I want to remove that. So if I click on it and go to item actions, I can actually say move to bank. I'm going to move that to my personal bank so that way it's out of that. And you'll notice that it gives me a little status message here and will let you know when it's finished. So depending on how many items you're moving around, it may take a minute or two. Uh, but that's how you can move items from bank to bank that you have the manage permission on. Um, notice I couldn't put them in things like the school net bank or the um, Certica Bank because I don't have permission to manage those items, right? So now it came up there with the little, it turned red with the bell icon. And so if I click off, 
or um, refresh my page here. I should see now that my high school bank now only has seven items. All right, so before we talk about managing banks, does anyone have any questions? I don't see any posted, Pam. Okay, wonderful. All right, so um, again, just going back to my slideshow for a second. Um, we do have a quick reference card on item banks and on um, all the different ways you can organize things. It's about seven pages, so it's there for you. It's on slide 11, um, but we're going to take a second just to look at how we manage a bank, right? So if I go back to my item bank, you'll notice that I can go in to the manage feature. So let's pretend we're five months from now and I have I have uh, won the lucky scratch off and I have won a million dollars and I have decided to retire, right? So Pam has, you know, won the lottery and she's retired. She, you know, no longer, you know, is available to manage any of these banks. Um, but oh no, Pam was the only manager for this particular item bank, right? So what you can do is you can work with your um, school net lead for your charter school or your district and you can submit a help ticket, a ServiceNow ticket, and we can go in and search for the item bank and add a new manager to it. Uh, so don't worry, there is always a recourse, but the best thing is to be planning because you never know when someone is going to win the lottery and retire, um, that you go in and using that manage feature, you make sure at least one other person can manage the bank. Um, so I'm going to go in here and where it says people and you can search by name. Now I am in the training site. So in the training site, we don't have that statewide database of people's names. Um, so I'm just going to type in um, HVD leader and I'll start to see the other leaders within the district. And so I'm going to click on that person and click on add people, right? But I don't want them to be before I do that. I want to change make sure that our manager. And so when you search for folks uh, in your own uh, production site, you're going to want to search last name, comma, first name. And it is a statewide database. So if you're looking for something like uh, maybe I'm working with Tony Smith in, in Wayne County Public Schools. Um, well, if I search for Smith, comma, Tony, it's going to take a while because there's a lot of Smiths um, throughout the state. So just be patient when you're searching with items uh, or with people for people's names in SchoolNet, whether you're on a co-authoring folder or whether you're here looking to add people to an item bank, it can take a little while. Um, it can take, you know, probably 30 or 40 seconds for the right names to pop up. So I'm going to click on that person and I'm going to say add people. And now I have the option to not only be manager, but to also make that person the owner of the bank. So let's say I am really retiring, you know, uh, and I wanna, you know, go ahead and kind of pass the torch. Uh, I can make this uh, login here, this user, the owner of this item bank. Uh, so that way um, it is, you know, theirs completely and, you know, they can uh, carry on. So this is how um, I like, the item banks, I think it has a lot of features in it that kind of make it um, easier to sustain as, you know, transitions occur uh, because the item bank will continue to uh, live on and be managed by others. So I'm click save. And now that other person has control or, of the item bank and can manage it. Any questions about item bank management, the levels of permission? None posted, Pam. Okay, great. All right, so I have just a couple of more things. So I did wanna share some resources with you. 
Um, in addition to learning about item banks, you might be interested in some other things. So we have some quick links here on this slide for you. You can look at um, the report library, which talks about everything that you want to know and we're afraid to ask with building reports in SchoolNet. Um, we also have a Google site, which has a webinar archive. So if you've missed any of our uh, webinars that we've had so far this year, you can go back and watch them. We also have a webinar schedule, so you can see what we're talking about. In March, we're going to be looking at um, different resources that you can find in SchoolNet that you might not have been aware or your schools. There's also a YouTube channel where you can find quick um, instructional videos, and I, I actually have the um, net Google type uh, listed up here uh, just to show you that webinar archive very helpful for looking at all the um, it actually goes back through all of the webinars last year as well so there's quite a library of uh, videos for you to go back and look through if you are new to using school net and you want more information Just checking to see, I'm gonna give one more look at questions. Let's see if there are any questions. I'm not seeing any, Pam. Okay, well, I'll end with my contact information. And you have my email as well as Twitter if you have Twitter account, please come follow me and um, let me know if you have any questions. And if not, I will um, give everyone back a few minutes on their busy work day. And I thank you for your time and attention. And thank you, Kathy, for helping out. Well, thanks for having me. Y'all have a good evening. All right. Thank you.